Hello everyone, and welcome to our introductory series into using the Unity game engine. The purpose of this series is to teach new game developers, uh, students, and, well, everybody else, how to make a game in Unity from scratch. We will be publishing an accompanying asset package with the video series, giving you a head start into games development without needing any of the specific uh, techniques or softwares for Unity object creation and the like. We're excited to see what you learn from this and what kind of projects you create. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. So what we're going to be making together in Unity is a 3D side scroller. This meaning that we are going to have a character and that character is going to move left and right. He's going to jump. He's going to pick up things, going to shoot. Um, and we're also going to be hooking up a hookshot mechanic so he can swing. We're going to go through all of these things together and we're going to provide you with all the assets so you don't have to worry too much about that. Take this as sort of like your opportunity to have all of the mechanics and things figured out for you and you can focus all your creativity in making those mechanics interesting to the player. If you want to delve more into the asset creation side, uh, we will link to some of our friends who have created uh, really good tutorial videos for these sorts of things. Uh, so I encourage you to check those out at the end of the video when we post those. While in later episodes we'll be dealing with how to implement all of the assets we give you, in this first episode we're kind of just going to go through the setup of Unity, downloading it, installing it, uh, just so we're all on the same page and so that we uh, ensure we are all using the same version of Unity because that can cause some problems. So first we'll be downloading Unity Hub, which is sort of your one-stop shop for all your Unity project needs. You'll want to download Unity Hub for Unity Personal, and while you're at it, you're going to open up the version archive um, in an extra tab. Give the terms and conditions a read at your leisure. Uh, once it's downloaded, run the installer and run Unity Hub at the end of that process. Assuming you don't have any versions of Unity already installed, your Installs tab should be empty. Uh, now we're going back to the Archive tab we opened before and install version 2019.1.2 through the Unity Hub link shown here. Uh, it's important that we are using even the same uh, decimal point number. We just want to make sure that th those problems do not occur. Un Unity 2019 should look the same regardless, but um, if you are using our asset package, make sure you are using Unity 2019.1.2. Your browser should prompt you to install it using the program you just installed, that is Unity Hub. Uh, you can go ahead and close your browser at this point and then install the Unity, uh, the Unity version uh, again, 2019.1.2. Uh, we won't be needing any extra modules, but you can install the documentation component if you're into that sort of thing. Once Unity is installed, you're going to want to head over to the Projects tab which should be empty at this time. Under New, select the version we just installed, which is 2019.1.2. Give your project a name, and then make sure it's being saved somewhere reasonable. You'll want the project in its own folder, as it will populate whatever folder is chosen with a bunch of subfolders, like assets, library, stuff like that. And you don't want to, it to make a mess all over your desktop. Make sure you have 3D game presets selected. Um, even though we're going to be making a side scroller, it's still going to use 3D assets. Opening the project for the first time will likely take a while as it's creating those subfolders that I was talking about before, um, populating the basic folder structure. Uh, this is okay, just be patient. Now that that hassle is over with, let's have a look around the editor. 
At the top right, we have the inspector. Here's the hierarchy and the lighting windows. In the inspector window, uh, we can see information about specific elements, such as this directional light and this camera. The hierarchy window shows you all of the game elements that are currently in the scene. Um, as I said before, there's the light and the camera, and as we add more things, uh, this is going to grow into a large list. The lighting window allows us to manage all of the lighting sources that are in the scene. Uh, we'll be talking about that a little bit more in episode 8, so uh, stay tuned for that. Down at the bottom here, we have the console, which is uh, what tells us when something bad happens in our code. It also tells us debugs uh, in our code, so occasionally we'll write to confirm that something is in fact working. Uh, it's very, very useful, and we'll talk more about that in the programming sections. And here we have the project window as well. This shows all the files, uh, this shows us the file structure of the project, some of which have already been populated by Unity, with an assets folder and a scenes folder inside. At the top we have a scene window, uh, that's what we're currently looking at our level through, um, and we also have a game window, that's where, that sort of like shows us what the player sees, or at least what, um, what's going to be in the build. The windows can all be moved freely around the editor to suit your needs and preferences, or can be pulled entirely and dragged into any uh, of the displays you have. Though be aware that this can be a little finicky, uh, try to keep it nice and neat. If you accidentally close a window, uh, do not panic. Uh, they can be gotten back through the Windows tab here at the top. Uh, while we're up here, let's save our scene with a better name. Make sure you put in the correct folder for organization's sake. Um, don't put it don't put it in the assets folder. That doesn't make any sense. To further our quest for organization, let's add a couple of new folders to this one uh, that we've been given. Under assets, uh, we'll want folders for scene assets, uh, which are things that we intend to assemble in the scene. Uh, we're going to want one for scripts. Scripts are the code that we can attach to objects and things in the level to make them uh, do whatever we want. Um, we've written a lot of scripts for you, so you don't have to be a programmer to be able to follow along. Uh, we want a prefabs folder. Prefabs are pre-assembled uh, or prefabricated game elements, uh, which can be brought into the scene as is. We'll have plenty of those for you to play around with, uh, and they can be easily instanced or duplicated. Under our new scene assets folder, uh, we're going to want to add 2D assets. Those are things like sprites and UI elements. Uh, 3D assets, those are, po um, those are like props and character models, uh, things that are three-dimensional, uh, as the name suggests. Uh, we're going to want an audio folder that's going to hold all the sounds and the music for the game. And we're also going to want a textures folder. That's where all the art and the uh, 2D objects for the models are going to show up. So lastly, now that we have all this organization going on and your uh, management skills are top notch, we're going to take a quick look at the asset store. You can use the asset store to buy things to put in your game, though there is a good amount of free stuff on there, such as uh, the asset package we are providing to you. You can make use of the filters to help narrow down what you're looking for. Generally speaking, anything you get through the store you can use in your game for any purpose, uh, though be sure to read the terms and conditions associated with the particular package to be certain that you do have the legal rights to use it. You can also check uh, things like requirements, file size, release versions, and supported Unity versions. This is especially important for uh, things like making sure that it works with Unity 2019.1.2, as we were talking about before. You should be using Unity 2019.1.2 if you're following along with our uh, little workshop here. You can use the search bar at the top to find specific packages. For example, we recommend using ProBuilder as a general purpose tool. It allows things like uh, global snap grids uh, for game elements and do basic modeling for quick prototyping um, or white boxing within, your, uh, within, um, within Unity without having to use other software like 3ds Max or Blender. Um, Obviously, as we've been talking about, you'll want to have an as our asset package installed. 
um, you can find a link right here. Uh, that link will bring you straight to our asset, our, our asset package, um, so you won't have to do too much searching for it. When you hit import, an imported package window will come up, showing the file structure of the package. You can uncheck certain parts if you don't want everything, uh, if you only want specific assets from it. Uh, we're just going to import the whole thing. ProBuilder is, a publish, uh, is published by Unity Technologies, so it's perfectly fine for us to use. And now, if we go back to our project window, you'll see that there's a new folder under assets called ProCore, uh, which has all the assets for ProBuilder in it. Um, feel free to poke around in there if you're so inclined. Uh, otherwise, um, you can uninstall it. We will not be using ProBuilder for our tutorial series. Thank you all for watching this tutorial on how to set up Unity. On um, the next episode, we will be actually jumping in and trying to create our own game. That will be an episode on environment design. We'll be taking some of the assets, the level assets that we have, and we'll be handing them off to you to start customizing your own, uh, your own, unique, uh, your own unique environment. Uh, so we hope you enjoy that. In addition, uh, we have some links and some resources that we feel may be beneficial to you in your uh, game development hobby or career. Um, so we encourage you to take a look at those. Uh, thank you again for watching this episode of Brain Academy, and hope to see you again real soon.